What will you do if you see a blind person walking towards a cliff? He can't see it because he's blind. And you know, if he continues to walk forward, he will walk off the cliff and he will die. So what do you do? Do you just keep silent and watch it happen? Or do you shout out and tell him, stop, turn around. If you continue on this path, you will die. What do you do? And today, you might even be that blind person walking towards the cliff. But it's not a cliff. It's something far worse. So let me ask you this question. If you die today, are you ready to meet God? The almighty God, the creator of the universe and the judge of the universe. James 4 verse 14 says, You do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. I'm going to die and you are going to die. All of us are going to die. This is the reality. You cannot run away from death. You cannot run away from truth because truth never changes. Hebrews 9 verse 27 says, And just as it is appointed for man to die once, and after that comes judgment. So Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for Him. Now, so many people focus on the end time. And although it is very interesting to talk about these things, and it will happen, the fact of the matter is that you can die tomorrow. You can die today. There are 150,000 people who die every single day. So use this time that you have while you are still alive, while you are still breathing, to turn to God. Turn away from your sins, repent and turn to God. Because there will be a time that His grace will be finished. It will be a time, a day, that you will die. And then it might be too late. Jesus says in John 3 verse 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through Him. Now listen to what Jesus says next, because most people only know verse 16 and 17. But verse 18 says, Whoever believes in Him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than the light, because their works were evil. Now you might say, but I'm not a bad guy. Yeah, I, I get drunk sometimes. I like to swear, but I'm not a bad guy. Not like the murderers and the rapists. Now you need to understand something. Sin is sin. If you choose sin, then you choose the darkness rather than the light, which is God. Jesus said in Mark 8 verse 36, For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul. Now, of course, the decision is yours. You can say, all right, I'm going to enjoy my life. I'm going to live in this short life and I'm going to live it to the full. You've heard this quote before. Enjoy life because it's short. Well, you can do that and you can enjoy your sinful pleasures. But then there will be a day when you will die and then you will be going to hell for all eternity. Jesus says in Matthew 13, verse 49, So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to be in a place forever and ever and ever where I would be gnashing on my... Oh, man. Weeping for all eternity. Now, some people might not like this message, this truth, but I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to save you. I'm trying to warn you. 
should warn you about the path that you're walking on and where it's leading to, to that cliff. I'm warning you about that cliff that you cannot see clearly. <sighs> Choose Christ today. If I did not care about you, I would not say anything at all. I would just sit back and watch. But I love you and I want to warn you because you need to understand the reality of your situation. Not liking the truth doesn't change the truth. If you go to the bank to draw money and there's no money, the banker tells you, sorry, there's no money that I can give you. Well, you might tell him, look, I don't like what you're telling me right now, but that's not going to change the truth. He will tell you, sorry, sir, but that is the truth. That is your reality. You might say, well, that's your opinion. I'm just going to think positive and I'm going to believe that there is money and there will be money. He's going to tell you your feelings your perceptions, your thoughts doesn't matter. Only truth matters. And the fact, sir, is sorry, there is no money in your account. And in the same way, there will be many people who will try to convince God to let them into heaven. And God would tell them, go away from me because I never knew you. Jesus said in Matthew 7 verse 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. I don't want to stand in front of God one day and hear the words, Daniel, I never knew you. Go away. And there will be a lot of people who will stand in front of God and they will use everything they can to try and convince the almighty judge of the universe to let them into heaven. Some will say, but God, I was so religious. And God will tell them, it doesn't matter. Religion cannot save you. Only a relationship with me can. I don't know you. Go away from me. You see, religion is man-made. God wants a true relationship. He wants you to become a reborn Christian, a new creation where you understand who He is, what He did for you on the cross. And you come to Him and you say, Lord, I am sorry. I repent of all my sins and I want to turn away from it and I want to live for you. And then you start this wonderful journey with God where He talks to you, you talk to Him, you have a relationship and then you are His child. John 1 verse 12 says, But to all who did receive Him, who believed in His name, He gave the right to become children of God. So coming to Christ and accepting Him as your Lord and Savior is the most important decision of your life. And you should not waste any time. Look at your watch. Look at the clock in your room, wherever you're sitting and watching. You see how it ticks? Every second is a second closer to your death. And you need to know it doesn't matter where you're from, what you've done. If you repent of all your sins with a sincere heart, He will forgive you. God says in Isaiah 1 verse 18, Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Through your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. And if you think that you're not good enough, it's good because you're not good enough. I'm not good enough. No one is good enough. Romans 3 verse 23 says, For all have fallen short of the glory of God. There is nothing that you can do to save yourself through your own power. You can only be saved by God's grace through real faith. Ephesians 2 verse 8 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And that is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. So it is a gift from God, but you have to make the decision. Will you accept it and gain eternal life or will you 
reject it, live for the darkness, your sinful pleasures, and then lose your soul. You have to make a decision. If you want to accept it, you have to believe God in your heart and you have to confess it with your mouth. Romans 10 verse 9 says, If you acknowledge and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, recognizing His power, authority, and majesty as God, and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. Now in verse 10, Paul explains it a little bit more. He says, For with the heart a person believes in Christ the Savior, resulting in his justification that is, being made righteous, being freed of the guilt of sin and made acceptable to God. Now, the Greek manuscripts doesn't say made righteous, it says declared righteous. So God the Father declares you as righteous when you accept what Jesus has done for you on the cross, that He paid the price for your sins with His blood. Now, let's continue. And with the mouth He acknowledges and confesses his faith openly, resulting in and confirming his salvation. So the Bible is very clear. If you believe in God, you believe it in your heart, you say it and confess it with your mouth, and you are a child of God. And you are saved because he declared you as righteous, not because you did anything special, but only through the grace of God. This only happens once, justification and then you start your journey of growing spiritually this journey is called sanctification where you grow in christ you in him and he in you in a real relationship until he calls you home this world will pass away 1 john 2 verse 17 says the world is passing along with its desires but whoever does the will of god abides forever Whoever does the will of God, it is talking about your fruit here, your actions. Your actions cannot save you. That is very clear. But your actions prove that your faith is real. James 2 verse 26 says, For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also faith apart from works is dead. There are many religious Christians out there who say, I'm a Christian. But when you look at their deeds, their actions, they have no fruit. Jesus told the story about the fig tree. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. And he said to the vine dresser, look, for three years now I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and I find none. Cut it down. Why should it use up the ground? And he answered him, sir, let it alone this year also, until I dig around it and put on manure. Then, if it should bear fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. Do you understand the story, this parable? Who is the tree? Who's the gardener and who's the man? The man represents God the Father. The gardener is Jesus Christ. And the tree? Well, that might be you. You only live once because of God's grace. And He's giving you time to come to Him, to repent, to be made new, a new creation that bears good fruit. But you need to know that the time of God's grace is running out for each person. And Jesus is saying, Father, give this person, give this plant, give this tree, give this person just a little bit more time. Give him one more year. And then, if he still does not bear any fruit, cut him down. And so it is time for you to choose. We will not be here for long. You don't know when your time is up. We will all die. I lost two brothers, both of them in their early 20s. And I lost my father a couple of years ago as well. Some people get sick, they get cancer, they know they're gonna die like my dad, and then it happens just out of the blue. My first brother was killed, shot three times in Johannesburg, South Africa. The second one died in a car crash. They did not expect it. And so you will not know when your time is up. 
you have to choose this darkness, the sinful world, or God, the light. The choice is yours. 1 John 2 verse 15 says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And the world is passing away along with its desires. But whoever does the will of God abides forever. So let me ask you again. If you die today, are you ready to meet God? Do you know Him personally? Do you have a real relationship with Him? Or is it just all religion? John 10 verse 26, You do not believe because you are not among my sheep. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. I'll ask you again, are you ready to meet God? If you say no, then what are you waiting for? Every second counts. Go to Him and pray to Him. How do you do it? You just talk to Him. You say, God, I'm sorry for all my sins. Forgive me for everything I've done. Please accept me as your child and start a new and fresh relationship with me. And then you get baptized and then you start this relationship with the Almighty. God says in Revelation 3 verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him and he with me. Don't you think it's time that you open that door to let him in so that he can change your life, to open your spiritual eyes so that you can see the truth of everything, of him, of you, the whole world. And what is your purpose in it? Then you start to realize who you really are, your identity in Christ. <sighs> Jesus says in John 10 verse 10, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I'll ask you again. If you die today, are you ready to meet God? If you are a Christian, but you're not sure if you're saved, then watch this video right here and I'll see you there. Now remember, God loves you. And I love you too. Bye. Take my life in Consecrated, Lord, to